Hello, this is Team 9's project, Chess X. Team 9 consists of Trent Feda, Pranav Julikanti, and Aiden Jennings. All three members of our group like to play chess, and one of the most popular ways to play chess today is online via a service like Lee Chess. Services like this allow you to learn and play with the help of some of the best chess engines available and compete against players from around the world. We wanted to adapt some of the features these sites use into a physical chessboard, like showing available moves, threats, and strategies, and allowing players to connect the chess engine and analyze moves in real time. From a high level, we identified some key features that we wanted to include. We opted to use digital Hall effect sensors to detect piece movement. Magnets would be placed in the bottom of each chess piece to trigger the sensors when they were picked up or put down. A central microcontroller would monitor these movements and light up LEDs based on the state of the board. This is a high-level overview of the project, which shows how a parent board acts as a control hub. A Raspberry Pi and the Hall Effect matrix are both interfaced with it via UART. At face value, this isn't very hard to follow. In practice, however, nothing is ever as easy as it looks. As students with a set budget, we made efficiency a high priority in our design process. Most PCB services will give you a good price on a 10 by 10 centimeter design, but anything over that and you risk paying more than double your original cost. Playing chess on a 10 by 10 board wouldn't be very fun, and it would be even harder to assemble, so we had to look for alternatives. When you buy PCBs, you usually get a minimum of five with any order. So we thought, what if we designed a board that could be tiled and reused to save time? Enter the quad, four identical boards used to control a 4x4 four four square quadrant of the board. 16 Hall Effect sensors and 16 LEDs, each monitored by a small ARM microcontroller, alleviates the need to use shift registers or individually addressable components. Using a modular design simplified hardware at the cost of now needing to develop code for two different chips. Most microcontrollers have a limited number of serial pins, so when you have four other CPUs on identical boards, you need to get creative. We opted to use UART as that's what we were most familiar with from earlier projects. Each quad board has a two-bit chip select that filters out signals from other boards. From a single child's perspective, it's the only other chip on the bus. The parent sets the child select address and then pulls the statuses in a round-robin loop. This means that all of the child code is identical, and hardware takes care of gating incoming and outgoing signals when not selected. Naturally, we ran into some problems with this. First of all, the boards are daisy-chained together to keep from having separate UART lines going to each board, and it turns out that cheap board-to-board -board connectors are not very sturdy. Bus contention was our biggest issue, however. UART is designed to be point-to-point -point between only two chips, and our solution involved using some hardware logic to gate which child had the bus at any given time. This led to an issue where when you have more than two boards connected to the same bus, UART signals can conflict when trying to pull low. To handle power regulation, game logic, and Pi connectivity, we used a fifth parent board as a hub. This board regulates and monitors voltage levels and distributes power to all of the peripheral boards. The microcontroller on this board runs the actual chess game logic and updates the game based on the updates from the child boards. Despite being a pretty straightforward design, the parent board still had its share of troubles. So the power components on the board were originally designed on a separate power mezzanine board for the prototype. And I had made some mistakes when porting over the power components onto the parent board. Uh, one, for example, is a ground plane short that was made by a VIA that I had that, as stated, shorts the 3.3 volts to ground. And luckily this was resolved pretty quickly by drilling out the VIA. Uh, secondly, so the schematic for the buck regulator has the bottom plane connected to ground. That's that big red surface on the PCB schematic that's listed there. And I had caught this for the uh, prototype because it doesn't actually connect to ground. Like, it doesn't want to connect to ground, and so I had to manually do it for the prototype. But somewhere along the uh, prototype or the parent board process, I had forgotten to actually connect that to ground, which was causing issues in itself. And that's where you see the picture on the bottom left where we have a wire connecting straight from the bottom plane onto another ground port on the circuit.
There were a few other ones. The smallest surface mount component of the board is a single three input AND gate that burned out several times. And even after we got the regular working, we had to replace it a few times, which uh, created a fun afternoon. We also had to put in some multiplexers, a new multiplexer that uh, is causing the blue rat's nets that you see on the top right corner. The actual chess logic wasn't hardware specific, so we could write and test standard C code that ran the logic for knights, queens, bishops, etc., without you know using it on the hardware. Uh, our software guy could then integrate it into the PSOC code without worrying about bugs in the logic. And the process worked well as it gave the hardware guys a task that wasn't hardware specific and would not rely on, uh, you know, interrupts, communication, and UART issues. There are several components to the software. Our software utilizes a master loop to iterate through each child board, updating the chip select. If a piece is picked up, the child board's ISR triggers and the data is cached in a buffer. The data in this buffer is sent to the parent when it initiates the transaction. The parent board keeps a global array tracking the location of the pieces and the LED states. These arrays are updated based on data received from the child and are used to update the LEDs and determine the available moves. This data is sent to a function which updates the global board that a piece has been picked up or set down. The location of this piece is sent to our chess logic class to determine the available moves. One of our reach goals in this project was to use a Raspberry Pi running Stockfish to suggest the best moves given a board position. To do this, we convert our board array to an FEN string that Stockfish can comprehend. This data is sent via UR to our Raspberry Pi, which then returns the best move. Our test logic class has functions for converting positions to strings and vice versa.